say good day again to each and everyone. I want to thank God for allowing me to be here. It's such a joy. I've been, I want to be frank again, even though we're coming along to the close of each uh, of this year. All of the connection, it's given me great pleasure to be here to bring forth the word of God. I want to say this day, I want to give God thanks and praise for all the sponsors and also for the management and staff of MTV. Brothers and sisters, as we're coming along to the close of this year, we have seen some things that started since last year, it's continuing getting out of, I wouldn't say out of control, continuing to spread across the Middle East. And we are hearing many voices are crying out. But today I want to share with us that it is not our word, but it is the word of God. And once the word of God have comes out, it has to accomplish what it said. It will not return unto him void. And, you know, within all of that, I want to say here today that we as human beings, we have to be very careful how we go about treating the word of God and speaking about the word of God. Because the word of God have a life and it have a life much more than many people may think. I, I say to people already, you may see a Bible, well full and being stuck, stuck anywhere. But what is in it? Is it? It's controlling the affairs of man. And if man don't want to take that full responsibility to learn from it and understand. And the Bible tells us also, you know, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If man don't want to fear God and think that they can only jump up in his face, as we usually say, and say everything and do everything that they want. God is speaking. And I always say, God is speaking. Man not listening and the time is ticking. I want to share with us here today. Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Ask any question. Do you really want to know? Do you want to know what God has spoken about our or of, of what is really happening presently now, especially in the Middle East? And I want to say clearly here today, there may be a lot of debates. There may be a lot of argument, a lot of confusion. And that is why I'm, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to sit here today to open the eyes of many people. We cannot fight God and win. And what God says will come to pass, must come to pass, to regard us how it happened. Bible tells us that it takes the foolish things to confirm the wise. We, don't, we will not understand, even though as brilliant a man might think that he are, that he cannot reach the level of God, because God said in his word, don't try to understand him, just believe him. And this is what I want to share with us today. If we, as human beings, want to spend eternity with God, we just got to obey him and believe him and walk according to his commandment. Today my topic is, do you want to, do you want to know? Do you really want to know what is some of the things that we have seen happening in the Middle East today and why it has to happen? But before I go into that, I just want to open in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you today for your mercy and for your grace. I thank you, O God, for giving me another opportunity, O God, that I can share forth your word, O God, Lord. I pray today, O God, for the sponsors, O God, Lord, and I pray, O God, for the management and staff of MTV. I pray for all those, O God, silent listeners and faithful, O God, and even those who are praying for me right now, O God, Father, Lord. Lord, as I come to bring forth thy word today, O God, help me, O God, I will do it with, with your accordance and not with mine, O God. Strengthen me today, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to share today, and that may not be the final day, but I just want to say it in such a way because it started a day. And a day that no man was predicting. Only those who are who involved with it. And I want to look into it today to show us here. Daniel chapter 12 from verse 1. He said here, at that time, Shall, shall Michael, the archangel, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy prayer shall be delivered. 
everyone that shall be found written in the book, that will be a time on coming, and that will be a day. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to shame, and, and everlasting contempt. Brothers and sisters, that's a day what will come. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars of forever and ever. But here God is saying unto Daniel, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the word and seal the book, even, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. This year, verse 4 especially, I want to highlight something here to us. Whether we want to know or we don't want to know. The Bible is telling us here that Daniel would have liked to see what happened there. But God is telling Daniel, shut up the words and say the book. Even to the, to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro. Now I want to bring that here to us. We have see, seen what's going on in the middle of this person right now. And I just want to use that word here. This was a day on the 7th of October, 2023, that many of us in our wildest dreams would have never known would have come. And that specific day, that even Israel today cannot understand how did these men get you the security system. But I want to boil, boil, boil over something to you in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1. Let's go. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel said the Lord, which stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth, and formed the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people around about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone. For all the people, all that burn themselves with it, shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Brothers and sisters, even presently now, out of 193 states, 147 already recognize Palestine as a state. But this will never happen. It will never come so. God never gave Palestine a homeland. Palestine is what we call an invader. God has given Israel that particular land. But as I said earlier, I want to highlight that. Do you want to know where this thing started? It started way back in Abraham's house. That's when it started. And today we have seen the effect of it. We have seen the effect of it. And because God has made a promise to Abraham, and, a, and God is a, is a covenant keeping God, and when he has turned Jacob's name into Israel and had promised we re reaffirm that covenant, we have seen what we have seen today. I want to say to us today, there is no way the Muslims, all the Arabs would acknowledge the Israelites or the Jews as brothers and sisters. They will never. Because they already have forced, forgo that. Because at the time, Ishmael was the firstborn. And the culture of that day that Ishmael should have been the inheritance of his father's kingdom, so to speak. But it was not in the plan of God because Ishmael was not the, the chosen one. He wasn't the, 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 the free. He was born. He was a born child. It was a concubine child. The promise was made between Abraham and Sarah. 
and God had to keep that covenant within them. But because man been deceived, and man continue to be deceived today, and thinking that they can turn Israel to accept the Palestine, and they can live side by side and share Jerusalem, that will never happen. If God wanted Jerusalem to be share, shared, he would have done that a long time ago. Solomon, who was David's son, close to God, was one of his behavior. And even when Solomon disobeyed God, God visited him and told him, I will take away the, the cities, the kingdoms from you. But I would only live one because my name is written there, Jerusalem. And my holy name is there. And that, because of the covenant, he represents the children of Israel. He will not take it away from him. Here, the Arabs and the rest of the world want to make Israel accept something that God never gave it to them. Still, I, you may find I go a little way out, but I just want you to know. What we have seen happening here now did not start yesterday. It was something that started way beyond. But God has told us in the book of Daniel, there will be a day that never have been before such a nation. And in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, God said he's going to make Israel a burdensome to all the nations around. Are we not seeing that today, brothers and sisters? Are we not seeing that today? But I want to come even deeper to show us the place that the world is crying out that Israel is taking advantage of, it is a place that God has a mark to be in the situation that we are in today. Do you really want to know? Let me look it up for you. Let me just give you some highlights here to show you. I want to show you here, brothers and sisters. We are more talking about Gaza. And everybody, they so. Gaza, the 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 pity Gaza. Everybody cried. Gaza marked in the Bible fourteen times. You found it in fourteen verses of the Bible. And within that, you saw where the Philistine, which represents the Philistine today, is within it. And but the one I really want to show you, because even in Judges, God speaks about judging Gaza and all of that. But the one I want to show you, I know I shared that here already, but I just want to highlight because some people are still going on today, even those what we call the most eloquent, educated, big UN and all about the ICG and all of them thinking that Israel is the victim. Israel is the one in error. Not knowing Israel is the one that God has placed there to let man know that he is in control and what he says must come to pass. Let me read something here for you. Amos chapter 1, verse 6. Thus said the Lord, For three transgressions of Gaza, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they are carried captive, the whole captive, to deliver them up to Edom. And verse 7 tell you, But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the place thereof. What I'm saying here, look at here. They went in there on the 7th of October and they killed over 1,200 and the captive, as we will say, they take hostages and they bring back into Gaza. That's a day that people got to remember. And God said, because they done that, here I say in verse 7 here, you're going to send a fire on the walls. So what we have seen here is not Israel fighting on their own. And brothers and sisters, we don't know where that would end. All what you hear people saying is, God has a mark for Gaza to be in a condition that he's he going to destroy it. And there is nothing, nothing the world can do. If, if many of you who listen to the news will understand so many things about it, you will understand that first time in history, and that is why I call it a day. If you want to know, you will know. First time in history that a nation has broke all the rules and regulations that the, that the UN have. If you listen to the news carefully, especially from Al Jazeera, 
They would tell you how much, how much medical, how much journalists, how much UN police, how much schools, how much hospital. Come on, brother and sisters. It was not just a will, not just a man will power. There is something God is saying to us here because He, he marked it in His word that it will have to come to pass. We have to look at ourselves and see where we stand today as individual. Because if God marked His word such in such such a word in his, in his book, in his scripture, for us to also learn and take knowledge and, 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 and wisdom about, and we were neglecting it all the time. Here we have seen it manifesting directly before us. What is for us to do? What, what do you think we have to do? Take heed of ourselves, brothers and sisters. Repent. Christ and him crucify. That is what we have to do to the cross, Jesus Christ, before he stood it. Because if we see that this have written in the book and it's coming to pass, that God said he will not forget Gaza, he will punish them. And he said he will send a wall of fire and destroy them. Why we today want to come against the word of God? The word of God is here and amen. He said heaven and not shall pass away, but not one jot of his word will pass. And I don't want to get nobody about scared, but I want to get people ready and get people to understand. Do you want to know? This is the word of God. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 5. Ashkelon shall see it, and fear Gaza also shall see it, and be very sorrowful, and Ekron for her expectation shall be ashamed, and the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. When you look at Gaza today, there are policies that tell yourself that it will not be. Here in Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. And the angel of the Lord speak unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. I just saying to us here that Gaza is in the Bible, brothers and sisters, but it is not for the best, as people might be thinking. Gaza got to be with what it is. What I'm saying is here, that is why I read Daniel. And, and Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4, that way God tells him, shut up the book. For the end of time, Zechariah chapter 12, from 1 to 2, he speaks about, look what God will do. Is it Israel now, Jerusalem, is not a burden to the nations around? We're talking about the war would expand and the war would spread out. The war not expanding and spread out on its own. God is speaking. Man is not listening. And we just continue to making conflict and conflict. If you go back into the book of Daniel chapter 9, and Daniel speaks about that also. Daniel, only confusion of faces. That's all that man is doing. Man not listening to God at all. And only make, even from the pulpit sometimes. That when we should be praying and cooperating, we're still making confusion. Because what we might be doing, and some leader might be telling, telling you what you're doing is wrong. Instead of you obey, you're still making conflict and confusion. For the past few, for even for the past 10 months, listening to my my gospel or my Christian news, so many pastors fall victim because some of them, they just did not want to listen to, to, the, to the word. Here, Daniel chapter 9 and verse 18. Oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thy eyes and behold, our desolation and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplication before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. Daniel here is pleading on behalf of the children of Israel. Because it, the time has come that Jesus Christ, or the 70 year up, and Daniel recognized that the children of Israel would have to face God again. But what had happened? The children of Israel was not paying attention to what God had said. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, one other thing, chapter 29, verse 10, and go down there. There was not paying attention to what God was saying, even though they was in captivity. And when Daniel read and he recognized that the time, the seven days up and God would visit the children of Israel again, he recognized they were in trouble. Here we are today, a day is coming again. A day is here and a day is coming again. That the world is not preparing for the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we have seen the signs and we are in trouble. Daniel speaks in chapter 9 of what happening here. He said here, I want to read here, verse 12. 
and he had confirmed his word, which he speak against us and against our judges that judges us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. Brother and sister, there are judgment coming under the heaven that had never have been done before. And the world have to prepare for it. One of the things that we get, some of us who are studying scriptures and watching at what is happening, what we have seen happening in the Middle East now is nothing comparing still for what is to come. There is this thing you call the mosque where the Muslims are going and worship in the Monday they now. And that was made a covenant in the UN. But don't you know that is where the temple was built? And that is where the temple would have to build again. The time will come when Israel will have to destroy that mosque to build that temple again. And brothers and sisters, within there, that is where we are going to see the whole Arab world will be coming against Israel. Because to them, that is a secret place. Don't, don't look at where they talk about Mecca. Mecca is just a showcase because I don't know how they could say they go in there and after they stone any devil. Nobody can stone the devil. You can't see the devil to stone him. But to see that mosque, when you hear the time come for that mosque to be teared down, then you would see what's happening. Israel now is fighting on about seven fronts. And even the present day now, Israel is waiting to make a decision that which is critical to the world future. In my following up and listening to Counting the Cost, this is a, a program on Al Jazeera Business News. And where the Bible said, Don't hold the oil, I've seen that where God is speaking about clearly. Even though Iran supply the world with 3% of oil, even though there is one of the biggest suppliers, but only 3% because of the sanction. 30% of the oil pass through their waters and they could shut it down. 30%. We have seen even now the Hitus in here and there. Ships that they say once they find they're looking going to supply to Israel, causing real problem to them. And then even in Egypt, all of them are Arabs. All of them are one. And all of them will come against Israel, will be against Israel, and will come against Israel. Right now, all of them, Israel is a burden to them. And some of them just not speaking up plainly yet. But there where the most of the oil is filtering throughout the world. And if the war is goes as how it seems it will go, and these people decide to shut the, 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 the gulf from oil shipping out, how you can you tell me that what God says is not true? But it will happen. It may not happen in me and your lifetime, but it will happen because the Bible tells me in Zechariah here that the whole world and all who strong in Israel will come against Israel. That's something I want to bring to us here to show us clearly too. God is telling us that they would come against Israel. That was the headline, but he never gave us details. Just look at what happened the 7th of October. It is not something that somebody have done to them that they have to rise up to defend themselves. And by defending themselves, they are saying that they want to make sure that it will never happen to them again. And by doing that, what happening, they continue to destroy as much as they could of their enemies. But within that, we have seen the fulfillment of what God speaks about Gaza have to be destroyed. And at the same time, what we are seeing here, what Israel is doing, is it not aggravating the rest of the world? Brothers and sisters, it may seem simple, but it has to come to pass because God said it will happen. One thing I want to sit here today and say to, to, to you out there, I will not tell you the day, neither the hour that Jesus Christ will come. That is, Jesus Christ himself said, only the Father know that. And I don't want to make that bold statement. It could be today and it could be a thousand years from now. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say to us here, even though what we are seeing now is a forerunner for what is to come or is a wake-up call for mankind to, to respect and to, to trust in the word of God and trust God for when he speaks. If that is what we have to take, God is showing us some sign there that we need to take heed of ourselves and how we live in on this earth here. Nothing is what is happening there is unknown to God. God already spoke, speak, spoke it. He already speak about it. 
and it has to come to pass. There is nothing that man could do to stop it. When I listened to the, to the Prime Minister of Israel, it was like in a time of Pharaoh. It's like he hard, it's hardened. He already makes statements because we have seen that countries in Europe already putting together and come against Israel, recognizing Palestine and cutting off aid and things from Israel. And he said he don't care. He would fight the war according to how he see to, to fight it. Even he warned America to regards what they have done. Brother and sister, this is not natural. This is not natural. This has to come to pass. And it must come to pass because it's been spoken by God. What I'm saying here today, do you want to know that God, do you want to know, and I would like to know that God is in control of the affairs of man. And there is nothing that man could do that when God says it has to come to pass, it will come to pass. I don't want to leave you here hanging today. I want you to look at it for yourself. Go into the scripture. Look especially for those of you who are thinking that Gaza is just, Israel just mashing up Gaza for soon. I want you to look at Amos chapter 1 and verse 6 and Amos chapter 1 and verse 7. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 4. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse, verse 5. I want you to see them things here. I want you to see that God is speaking and man, it's time for him to listen. We are taking God at his word just too ordinary. Even in 2 Kings 18 and verse 8, he smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders there from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. Gaza never was in such a lovely place, brothers and sisters. What God has said about Gaza, Gaza is written 19 times in the Bible, and when you read it, it's all about in war and confusion. There wasn't anything much about peace with Gaza. There isn't any peace that going to come out there. They cannot, they will never live two, um, side by side in peace. They, they, you will never see that. God never speak about that for them. All what you have seen here, that Gaza at the end of it all will be destroyed. You look at it today, brothers and sisters, and you, you physically you will cry. You will have pity over them. But as, when you understand the word of God, sometimes you have to repent. Let the word of God have his way. I want to say thank you today for your listening. I want to say God bless you. If anyone, I'm Minister Ferguson, 404-0405. I worship at non of Open Bible Church. If you want to get in contact, you can call Reverend Kelly Gangadin at 444-8281. I'm willing to speak, to discuss, to reason with anyone who, who wants some clarification of what is taking place. Because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I don't want to think. I pray to God every day to help me that I will be able to see through the eyes, spiritual eyes, through the word of God, not just physical speaking. That I can see it out there physically and come back into the word of God and see where God speak of what is happening. Too many times we just brush things outside, brush things outside. But we don't understand that many of them things that God has spoken of must come to pass because the word will not return unto him void. He said so. And we have to respect that. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you and I praise you today for your mercy and for your grace. I thank you for what you have helped me to do today, O oh God, Lord. Guide me, protect me, O oh God, Father, Lord. As I go forth, to oh God, I pray for the silent listeners. I pray for the sponsors. I pray, O oh God, for the management and staff of MTV, O oh God, Father, Lord. God, continue to cover me, O oh God, Lord. Continue to limit the path of righteousness for your name's sake, O oh God. Give your thanks, give your praise. Hallelujah after your name, O oh God. Touch, O oh God, that sick one, O oh God. Touch, O oh God, Father, Lord, that infirmity, O oh God, Father, Lord. I pray, O oh God, Lord, for those who might be going through depression and anxiety, O oh God, that you touch them, O oh God. In the prison, O oh God, Lord, in the hospital, O oh God, in the workplace, O oh God, Father, Lord. Wheresoever in community, O oh God, Lord. Have mercy upon their life, O oh God. And just let, O oh God, I pray that men and women will run to you before it's too late. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, Lord turn.